Morning and all. John Etheridge here again for another Monday morning. Um, it's a lovely day in Norfolk. Uh, you can probably see through the window behind me. If you can't see past my white hair in the window, I think I disappear a bit in there, don't I? Um, anyway, what I thought I'd do from this Monday morning is to have another go at that blending video. Um, I'm going to uh, explain briefly how to just blend properly um, and the tools that I use. Um, so, without any further ado, let's go ahead with that. Right, so as I said, um, this is going to be a uh, very short tutorial, hopefully, <laughs> on um, blending pastel pencils. Um, there are other mediums that have blending, of course, um, but you will find that, that the, the, albeit most blending is kind of the same, there are they're the unique qualities to make blending different on other mediums and over the due course of time I will certainly come to some of them. Um, so firstly I think it's useful to know what tools there are. Um, I mean it's your fingers obviously you know fingers are the great um, more so towards the latter starts uh, the latter parts sorry of, of a picture um, there is tissues. I wouldn't necessarily use tissues on, on this. Um, there are things like makeup brushes. Um, now, as I suggested in the last video, makeup brushes are better in the early stages of a picture because when you use them in the latter stages, it does tend to take off the pastel rather than blending it. Um, so, the other things that you can use, and they come in many different sizes and shapes, and they're actually really expensive, are these, and I will show you. These are um, uh, colour shapers. Now, colour shapers, as I said, are very expensive, and they have these rubber tips, and they come in different sizes. I believe they're actually used for clay making as well, and oil paintings more than anything. But I use these mainly on soft pastels. There are occasions when I've used them on pastel pencils, um, but they have a grey or a white tip. The grey tip is generally hard, and the white tip is generally soft. And like I said, they come in all these different shapes and sizes. Um, another thing that I've never ever used, um, and I really ought to give it a try, is, is this uh, liquid, liquid fire, uh, pastel liquefier. Um, I'm well. I read on the bottle that it that it breaks down the pastel, and um, can give you blends that are quite unique. Um, I would imagine it would probably be better better on soft pastel, but pastel is pastel, isn't it? At the end of the day, right? So um, the very last thing, and the one really all you need, apart from maybe the makeup brush on early occasions if you're doing a portrait. Um, is these uh, blending stumps. Now these blending stumps, they do have to be cleaned. Um, I've seen a video where it suggests that you don't clean them. Um, now that's wrong. That, you know, that, that is an opinion of another artist. I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but life is life and that's how we are. Um, so you do need to clean them and you clean them on a piece of sandpaper. You roll them across the sandpaper like this um, and you turn them at the same time and they will clean up and believe it or not the cheaper ones are the better ones. Um, this other artist she, uh, she suggested that, that um, stumps fray and she's absolutely correct in that but I would suggest that maybe she might be just using um, the expensive uh, 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 blenders and I can quite see where she's coming from because they do fray and they are not that good actually when it comes to that point. But these um, cheaper ones, uh, in particular Royal and Langnickel believe it or not, they're very cheap and they are very solid and when you scrape these over a piece of sandpaper and clean them you get what you more or less started with. It won't be always uh, nowhere near as clean as it was obviously but uh, yeah, they are very, very, very good, and in in theory, in essence, they're the only thing you really need for a pastel pencil painting. 
Right, so I'm going to show you how to blend. Right, I've got two colours here. Right. Firstly, I'm going to show you how not to blend. Okay. So, I find that a lot of people tend to scribble on their page like that. And then they scribble the other colour on. And now it's, it's okay where they're overlapping. Right. But if you do that, you've got all this paper showing through. First off the bat, it doesn't have enough pastel on there. And consequently, when you come to blend, you're going to get a very uh, haphazard blend. And you're going to end up with lines where you've pressed harder and lines where you can see the paper. And you're not going to get a very good blend. So the first thing you need to do is get enough pastel on the paper. Very, very important, especially the first layers. Um, and what that does, if there isn't enough pastel on the paper, there's not enough pastel to blend into. Right? You need a nice, nice uh, surface on which to blend. If there's nothing there to blend into, it's just going to skip across the two for the paper. So get enough pastel on the paper. Uh, is the first thing. So I will show you that right now. The second most important thing is not to press hard. Now I will just demonstrate if I press hard, right, and then I try and blend that out. There's too much pigment settled in the tooth, and that won't blend out. Right, so if I press lightly, but at the same time get enough pastel, what that effectively does, I mean I'm pressing very lightly here, but I'm putting on layer upon layer, rather than trying to get it all down very quickly. Um, just be patient, right? That effectively lets the pastel sit on top of the surface of the paper, and you will get a better blend. Alright, again, blend lightly. You can see that's already blending better than that. Look, I can't get rid of that line because there's too much pastel there and not enough pastel there. But here, because I've laid it on lightly, I can put a nice, smooth, even surface onto that page. So again, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to Another way of uh, putting the pastel on the paper is actually just to hatch and hatch smoothly rather than going up and down because what you do end up with is more pastel at the ends. But uh, if I layer this in, right, uh, let's say for argument's sake now that's the bottom part of a layer of skin. Okay, I'm laying in the pastel that I need quite lightly. But assertively. Now that will depend on the pastel pencils that you have, of course. Um, softer pastel pencils will go on a lot quicker. These are kind of what I call a medium grade, um, but very professional grade, and they're the Faber Castell. Right, so I'm laying on layer after layer after layer and getting enough pastel on there. This is pastel mat, by the way. Um, it is effectively the same on other papers, however, it, it, that will depend on how much pastel you're laying down then. Okay, so we lay a purple next to it, we layer that on. You can see that it's sitting on top of the paper and on top of the tooth. pull it into the next colour along, which is the orange. In itself, you can get quite a nice blend by putting what I call this glaze of pastel pencil over the top of orange. Um, so that will actually uh, give you a, a blend, but it won't be quite as subtle and um, soft as when you use your pastel uh, uh, blender. So there we go. I've got enough pastel on there now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do small circles to blend them together. And you'll get a nice transition from this purple 
into the orange. A good thing to do is to start from the lighter colour to the darker colour. Obviously, if you'd be pulling the darker colour across, so you would start from the lighter colour. But you can see I'm getting a really nice soft transition there. Now you can imagine if I was doing skin, for argument's sake, again, I would just lay in colour here. Uh, maybe that might be a crimson on top of a, a, a flesh tone colour. And I would just soften that in and get a nice subtle effect. Uh, and then I can play around with the highlights against that. So, what I'm saying is, put plenty of pastel on, lay it on softly in layers, don't press hard. When you're using this stump, use this edge, don't use the point, because again, using the point will get you no blend whatsoever. Using the side is like having a brush. Okay, so use the side edge, not the point. Clean your stumps before every painting and during your painting. Um, you don't want to be taking this pastel dust into a clean area of colour and dirtying it up like, I hope you can see that on there, like that. You just wouldn't want to do that, so there, there you can see it's darkening that up. You wouldn't want to do that. There are times you can do that. You can use the colour that's on your blender to go into another thing, and you can get a very nice subtle effect, like in skin tones and what have you. Um, so it's kind of um, play around with it, but I suppose the most important thing to do is to do everything lightly. Lay the colour on lightly, make sure there's enough, blend lightly, light colour to dark colour, and clean your stumps. Don't really think there's a lot more than that. It's quite simple. It means being patient is effectively what we're saying. Be patient. Don't try and get the colour onto the page too quick because you will fill up the tooth of the paper rather than having anything on the surface to blend out. So I hope that's helpful. Um, what's the next video going to be? Well, maybe we'll look at doing a, a soft pastel sky. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please like it. Please share it. And above all, please subscribe because don't forget there's a free pastel portrait or pastel paint. Oh, well, maybe any other medium. I don't know. We'll see. But there's a free portrait coming along. Um, and my first thousand subscribers, when I eventually get there, are going to be in the pot for that. Uh